Good, good afternoon. This will be a short video on how to create a roller bearing using FreeCAD and the approach will be using the Sketcher tool. So to start out we're going to create a new document and we're just going to add a body and a sketch. Um, <clears throat> all the sketches in this case are going to be on, on the YZ plane and um, <clears throat> that just makes it easier for orientation later on. So we're going to create a couple of sketches uh, to start out with because we're going to have four different parts for the roller bearing. Um, so you, you have to make the body active by double clicking on it. They're all going to be in the YZ plane. Um, the reason that is uh, so, they, so it lays flat on a, on a standard plane. So I'm just going to be creating each sketch and then, then we'll um, We'll rename them shortly. So there's going to be four of those. Okay. So those are four sketches. And the, the names are going to be the outer ring, the inner ring, and I'm sorry for the keyboard mashing sound. The raceway, which is a part, is, is going to be a part that's going to be removed, and the ball itself. <clears throat> so, for each for each of the outer and inner rings, we're just going to have a um, a box, and that's going to create the ring. So, uh, and we'll be adding pa parameters later. So, I'm going to do the outer ring, and we're going to do a box for the inner ring. And for the raceway, we're going to do a circle, and that's going to be. So right now, I'm just I'm just throwing this together, and later on, um, we'll we'll do parameters and get it get it squared away real nice. So then the ball is going to be going in here. Now the ball is a little bit different because uh, we're going to be using the revolve tool. In order to use the revolve tool to create a sphere, you have to start with a half a sphere. So this is going to be our half a sphere, and I'll use the arc tool from endpoints in a rim. So we'll do that endpoints. You gotta wait to get the strings in a rim. Okay, so those are all our basic shapes um, that are going to be revolved, and I'll show you just real quick what so what the revolve is going to kind of look like. Um, so you see the outer ring. And we'll just do a revolve and you'll see like, see how that's going to make the shapes later. So we're going to get rid of that for now. Um, so <clears throat> what we're going to do at this point is get these uh, into a uniform shape and with parameters. So we're going to use the spreadsheet to add parameters. And we'll do a new spreadsheet and open it. And what I like to do with when I'm working with the spreadsheet and parameters is, is do two two windows side by side so you can kind of see what's going on. <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do, uh, and these are not industry terms. We'll do the um, the outer diameter. Is outer two T's or one? I don't know. I don't feel like looking it up. And we'll just give that a big. Um, and let's just uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some guessing at diameter so please don't hold me to that but let's just do radius so let's do outer radius and we'll just we'll make it a 10 millimeter radius we're gonna do the uh, outer shoulder let's call it and this, and this will also be a radius let's make that eight the inner shoulder, make that six, and we'll do the bore, and we'll make that four. So it'll be, this will probably be a badly shaped. So now we want to do, so we also want a position for the raceway, so we go raceway radius. And we're going to put that, it's going to sit right in between. 
So its radius is going to be 7. And we're going to do the ball radius, which the difference between the inner shoulder and outer is 2. So 4. So let's make it right between. Let's make that ball radius is going to be, let's go with 3. I think that'll work. And we can change those layers. Now, in order to use these as parameters, you have to add uh, aliases for each of these. So we're going to just do a big R for that radius. We'll do a little, uh, let's do radius underscore O. And we'll do big R underscore O. Are, these are not industry. Industry uses like L I L O or something like that. But we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it our own way. We'll radius underscore B for more. I'll we'll do radius underscore R for the raceway. I don't know why I'm doing caps on some and not on others. And for the final one, we're gonna do R underscore. I'll just do ball. Okay, so I think those are all the uh, parameters we need, and if not, we can always go back. So to change the parameters, we're gonna, we're gonna need this. Oops, we need width. So let's do, and you can't edit the spreadsheet. Right? I'm sorry, you can. Do width, so that's gonna be, we're gonna just call that seven millimeters. And, oh, you can't set the, uh, you can edit the spreadsheet, but you can't, uh, you don't get the toolbar. So we're gonna say width here. Okay, back to outer ring. So first we wanna set the width. We're gonna do a um, <clears throat> vertical distance. I know, vertical width, I don't know. So to access each alias, you just do spreadsheet and then width. There you go, okay, okay. And you see it, it's now set to seven millimeters. So to do the shoulder, the outer radius, we're going from the center point of the drawing to the to the radius we want, to the position we have, and you see how that's why they uh, gradually went in. So we're going to set a, a horizontal distance here, and that's going to be the function spreadsheet, and what do I call it? R, R sub outer, I think, right? Okay. It'd be nicer if I kept that consistent. Yeah, so there we go, there's our 10 millimeters, and then we're gonna do R sub inner. Pick spreadsheet again. So you can arrow down or you can mouse down to get what you need. Yeah, so I don't like, that's, oops, that's the inner shoulder. What, what did I call this one? Let's try that again, sorry. Uh, so when you're doing these, you want to look, you can look at the, and this is a good reason why t to keep the spreadsheet open. If um, 10 mil, no, oh, so I did small o. So I can see that the result in this case is 8, and that matches my argument there. So that's a good reason to keep them both open. Okay, that's better. Put that there. Um, and that's it for, oh, and the last thing I want to do is I want to create a symmetry constraint so everything will line up real nice so that's it for th for the outer radius or the outer ring and now we're going to do the inner ring and the inner ring is done much the same way first we don't want to set the width over here so we'll set the width and that uses the same one as before is spreadsheet width and you can see the result is seven millimeters. Checking that real quick always will save you a lot of time. Um, let's set the symmetry constraint right away so it looks so it doesn't look so wrong. Bam, love it. And then we're gonna do so we're now we're gonna do the inner shoulder. And it, it gets a little bit tedious typing in all of these uh, these aliases. Um, so I'll, I'll only use this if you, if you plan to do a lot of customi customized um, parts. If you're going to do a one one shot bearing, I would just enter the measurements directly. Uh, but this is, but I'm doing it here to show you how how to use parameters. 
So now we're going to do the bore. So it's, and you got to hit the function every time. And what, what do we call it? The radius underscore. Don't know. Bore. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking actual words would be better. Don't know. Okay, so that's it for the inner race, inner uh, ring. So now we're going to do the raceway. So the raceway is is going to be two things. We're going to set a radius, and I th I think I'm just going to do it easy for myself this time by doing it spreadsheet uh, radius of the ball and we'll do it plus plus 0.25. So you can how you can see that it's um, you can do math within these. So that's good to know. <laughs> nope, that's way too big. Um, so let's just change the ball radius. Let's go 2.5. Now you notice that this didn't change. When I close this, it'll change. Yeah. And if I go back in, you see now it's 2.75. So now let's put this set. We're going to set the um, the resulting it's going to result in a toroid now you and again you could have done this toroid <clears throat> with a physical shape too so we're going to set a distance for this and that's why we got in the the raceway radius so that's uh, the distance from the center that this that the raceway is going that the raceway cutout is going to revolve um, so that's the radius Oops, seven millimeters, good. So that should center that whole thing. And nope, what did I do? So I was in shoulder, outer shoulder, centered within there. Oh no, it is. It just doesn't look like it for some reason. Probably because of this. So then we have the radius. Okay. So that last thing we're gonna get is uh, is this guy. So um, so to close that. And now let's do the ball. So the ball is uh, so one of the things this need then needs to be on a tangent with the uh, with that center thing. Let's set the radius here. So this is the ball radius. Sets the radius. Now we all, now the center point is going to be the same revolve radius as the um, revolve distance. Sorry, as the raceway radius. So they're sharing the same measurement. Okay. Okay. And now an interesting side note is, so that's all of our sketches are done. An interesting side note is when you go into a spreadsheet, you can see all your values right there. You can't change them here. I wish you could, but you can't. Um, but if you change them here, we'll just change one and then put it right back. So if I change this to 14, you see our sketch resizes. So you can see the value of that pretty quick, I think. So now we're going to do the revolve, which will quickly turn this into something that looks cool. So I'm going to start with revolving the outer ring. And I'll, it's just revolve and okay. We're going to revolve the inner ring. Revolve from the part workbench and okay. So we've got those. Now we're going to revolve the raceway. Revolve and okay. So the last one is let's hide these real quick. The ball is a slightly different revolve. So we want to select the part, just the arc of the ball, not the center line, and select revolve. And we're going to do a select a reference, and what this is going to, is going to tell FreeCAD what to revolve around. And now you're going to select the center line, and you should notice that the arc turns white and the center line turns green, and you're good to go. So now you've got a sphere, which is the same sphere, and I imagine the same way they uh, create the sphere when you when you directly select a part. I don't know. I'd have to ask one of the developers. So let's bring back all of our parts and do some some, some boolean operations. So the first Boolean operation is going to be the outer ring and the raceway. So we're going to uh, subtract the raceway from the outer ring, and now you see there's a ball cut out there. And we're going to do the same thing again. 
with the um, the inner ring and the raceway even though you can't see the raceway let's, let's bring the raceway back so you can see it so the inner ring will revolve and the raceway will revolve and boolean subtract and there you go and it hides them for us which is nice so now we have what what's starting to look like a ball bearing And the final thing we need to do with the ball bearing is to create an array of the ball revolves. So for some reason, the array and part design on this version of FreeCAD, which is FreeCAD version 0.17, I do the daily. For some reason, this array, polar array, doesn't apply. I get please create a subtractive or additive feature first. If somebody knows why, let me know. But fortunately, the sorry, wrong one. The draft tool also has a revolve. So we select the ball, and we're going to do an array, and it creates a polar or rectangular array. So it creates the array, but at first it just does the rectangular one. So the first thing we need to do is switch that to from array type ortho to array type polar. And I always I put these down to one just because I like to, and and I think it's going to be about eight balls to be all the way across. Yeah. So now this wouldn't be a working bearing because I wouldn't. It'd be a very sloppy bearing, and the center ring would bop around a lot because once these balls all get freed, they would um, collect, and you'd have a you know the, this much space times nine or eight to uh, to create open space, which is almost the size of an entire ball, but you can print this. That's the key here, is this is a printable file. So that's it, that's how you create the bearing. The final thing you'd wanna do is, um, and, you can, and you can tweak it, like I'd probably want a larger distance between the ball and the ball and the raceway for printing. Um, another nice thing you can do is make it a little bit transparent so you can see what's happening on the inside there. I find about 25 is a nice value. And then you can see the balls in there. And that's kind of cool. Um, so the final thing to, if you want to print this, is to select these three items and file, export. You can select STL and then you just type bearing, and apparently you have to type the extension .stl for it to actually save as an STL. Uh, so you can save that as an STL. You got a lot of stuff there. And um, let's see, let's see if we can open that in. in uh, let's try to open. And there it is. And that's a that's a fully printable file. You can see it turned yellow right away for Cura. Fifteen minutes. It's probably a little small for printing, depending on how good your printer is.